From Monday to Tuesday, you don't have any fun. From Wednesday to Thursday, just go out for a run. Friday and Saturday, you're always getting drunk. And Sunday, you stay at home and never go to the Welcome back, my night outers. This is My Night Out Radio. This is DJ Psycho Eddie. In studio, we have Chuck from Senior Discount. Woohoo! I had to drive all the way over here from Tony Jones' show just now. <laughs> it was a hell of a commute, wasn't it? I just barely made it in time. By the way, ladies and gentlemen, you can always catch us at MyNightOutRI.com for all the recent events, upcoming events. Also, uh, check us out on Facebook forward slash MyNightOut. Uh, if you want to get in touch with us, you want to get on like Chuck has, we are on uh, Verizon.net, My Night Out Radio at Verizon.net. Well, Chuck, like I do to a lot of people, I'm going to put you on the spot right off Let's the do bat. It. Restaurants. Yeah. I'm a fat guy. <laughs> yeah. Now, this is no secret. I, I can't hide this if I tried. You going to ask me my favorites? I'm going to ask you where you've been in the last week. Last week? Oh, my God. That's Wh- right. Where I'd did like we go, Gina? Wait, well, I, is my mic? No, oh. I can talk about. Yeah, it is. My girl, my yes. girlfriend Gina is here. <laughs> Gina from uh, Chuck's girlfriend from <laughs> Senior Disco is also in studio. And uh, <laughs> apparently, we went to Red Stripe on Monday for the Ooh. first time. How was that? It was really good. I got the Red Stripe grilled cheese, and it had uh, prosciutto and pears in it, and it was excellent. And they they had some uh, a fried chicken appetizer that came with polenta French fries, oh. and they were excellent. Now, where are you guys based out of? Because that's where I'm going to... Okay. I live on Main Street in Warren. Okay. So I'm right down the street from... Uh, You're on the other side of the state. Yeah. Back we're at lunch. We're near, we're near um, Trafford, which is really good, which is on Water Street. Have you been there? No. Oh, it's new. It, it, it started like last summer or maybe the summer beforehand. True to form as a Rhode Islander, I do not venture on the <laughs> other side of the bay unless I absolutely oh, have to. I did. I went to 60 new restaurants last year. Oh, um, wow. wow. I, I, I kept track of it for my podcast. And at the end of the year, I did my favorite dish from each one. Um, but uh, yeah, I live, I live in Warren. So 
Um, I went to Simone's in Morin, which opened kind of like in the past, I'd say, year mm-hmm. on Monday night with Gina, and it was uh, or Thursday night, and it was it was pretty good. They had some chowder that was a little bit clearer than I like my chowder, and I went to Somerset Creamery this week for the first time, which is my favorite ice cream place in, around the area. I know it's in Massachusetts, but yeah, so that's that's where I've been this week. Um, I that everything. I think so. No. <laughs> I don't know. We, we like to go to a, new, a lot of new places. I love Mexican. That's my thing. I like Mexican myself. Uh, personal favorite right in downtown, well, right just outside of Oneyville, uh, as you're heading up uh, Plainfield Street, Rancho Grande. Yep, I've been there. It's awesome. Now, there's also... It's kind of weird inside, right? Yeah, you walk in and you <laughs> literally walk into a table. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, but the food there is amazing. Amazing, yeah. The, uh, the, chef, the owner mm-hmm. and his mom, or the mom and her son that own it, um, they do a lot with uh, Rhode Island food fights. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah. Mom, I can't. I, sorry, I cannot remember her name. I'm horrible with names. Yeah, that's why I have yours written down <laughs> right here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, they do a lot with Rhode Island food fights. Every time I go in there, especially because I, I walk around Providence in clown makeup quite a bit, mm-hmm. she recognizes me. She puts me in the corner. Nice. I think to hide me so I don't freak <laughs> out the other customers. But she always takes very good care of that's me. That's great. Uh, she she does. Recognize You're scaring the children. That's great. Oh. I love Rhode Island yeah. food fights. I already signed up for the coffee throwdown for uh, August. Yes, me too. Excellent. I love that so, stuff. I think it's a great idea. But yeah, if you actually <laughs> let's get adventurous. Of course, you've yeah. done the Oneyville, New York system. Yep. I'm going to go the other direction on Plainfield Street. Mm-hmm. You round the bend past New Connecticut Hill. There's a little place called El Paisano. I have not been there. It's Guatemalan and Ecuadorian food. Oh, yeah? What is that like? What does that mean? Um, <laughs> food from Guatemala and I, I, Ecuador. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping for a signature ex- dish, maybe, but... <laughs> it's, it's very similar to the Mexican. Yeah. Uh, spicy foods, grilled meats, yeah. and what have you, but the way they do it is completely different than you're going to have at a Mexican restaurant. Right, okay. Which, you know... You gotta have variety, and, mm-hmm. and I'll try anything. Mm-hmm. Uh, another one that's really popular, uh, I love it. Uh, it's right downtown. You know the Fat Squirrel? Yes. It is the Fat Squirrel. It is also Halfway Tree. Oh no, I've never even it heard is of that a Jamaican restaurant. Oh man, you like the jerk chicken, the beef patties, mm-hmm. whatever. You go there. The food is absolutely amazing. That's great. That's um, great to know. I believe they're also uh, sponsors for uh, the Coalition Radio, which. Uh, Tony, our sound guy, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, Tony Jones in studio, taking care of us, making my golden voice sound that much better. <laughs> um, his other, one of his other shows, the, the coalition, they are a sponsor nice. and even, well, I'm not getting paid for it and I'm endor- endorsing the place. Yeah. 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 That's great. Mm-hmm. That's great to know. So tell me a little bit about senior discount. If I've never heard of okay. you before, Tell me, where'd you guys start? And uh, well, here's here. I'll, I'll, this is what I'll tell you about. Um, so, we were three silly kids uh, who loved music and loved uh, going to local shows uh, in the early early 2000s. Decided to start a band um, when we didn't play instruments. Um, it took two years, learned them poorly. But then we learned them better in the past 11 years of us being a band. We've been around for 11 <laughs> years now. Um, and uh, we, you're actually at the tail end when sucking as a band was actually a badge of honor. <laughs> yeah, you know it's hard to be in the punk scene. Wait, you mean it's not? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's hard to be part of the punk scene and being proud of like playing well. A lot of a lot of bands are like, we're you know you're supposed to suck if you're in a punk band, and I'm like, no, you're not. You don't have to. No effects doesn't suck. No effects is awesome. Well, there is a band um, I'm quite a, a fan of called Crinkly Ass Crackers. <laughs> yeah. Okay. They. For the longest time, their drummer was a styrofoam head in front of a snare drum. <laughs> I and, like that. And that's performance when, art. When they start, they actually learned their instruments at shows. They, yeah. they wouldn't <laughs> practice. They had a wonderful song called "Baby Parmesan," <laughs> <laughs> yeah. which just, it's, yeah, yeah. it's got so much wrong with it, but it's absolutely <laughs> beautiful. That's great. But. If you ever get a chance to ke- check them out, I don't think they're even around anymore, so you're going to have to hit YouTube. Well, yeah. I, I don't know if you know this, but Dave from the legendary band Crinkly Ass Crackers also played a necrophiliac meat circus and is now a member of Tony Jones and the Cretan 3. <laughs> wow. No, it all comes back around. Is that a, we scooped them up. Is, is that promotion, demotion, or a lateral <laughs> move? <laughs> Actually, that's his very guitar uh, in the corner over there. Wow. Oh, that's great. Apparently not practicing it because it's here. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Yeah, so, I mean, 
We uh, we start we started out as a punk band, really influenced by a lot of the mainstream punk rock, like Blink One Eight Two and Green Day, as well as bands like No Effects and Against Me and Rancid and stuff like that. But we quickly kind of diversified and we made comedy videos. Uh, at first, they were really loose, kind of more sketch based and maybe more prank based. We did a lot of pranks. Um, we still do pranks, but now. The videos we do are more episodic. Um, they're kind of like a TV show. The most recent one we actually did as a premiere in AS, at the AS220 in Providence, and we did a new a new whole video that's like a it's just like a sitcom. It's uh, multiple storylines. It's based around the fact that we had two new guys and we were putting them through senior discount orientation <laughs> and teaching them how to be in the band. Um, and it was uh, it was it's one of my favorite videos. I love it. And uh, yeah, we we film it. it's just like a sitcom, like 25 minutes or so. Uh, multiple storylines, good stuff. And so we, we, we started doing that a long time ago. A little bit more jackassy at the time. Um, a lot of stunts. And, uh, you know, eventually we also got into podcasts too. But we basically tried to find ways to promote the band to people who, you know, it's hard. Especially in the Rhode Island music scene. You're like, oh, another band I have to worry about? Another band that wants me to go to their shows? It's like, well, how can we be a little bit different? And we had these other interests. So it's like, yeah, let's integrate them. Why not? Well, you, you just brought up a hot button word. What's that? Promotion. Yeah. Promotion is, is probably one of the biggest controversial mm -hmm. uh, topics in the Rhode Island music scene right now. I agree with that. Where do you weigh in or do you want to weigh in? <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I'll don't get in. me wrong. There's a lot of people that are staying purposely quiet because yeah. they have a lot to lose. Right. Um, the, way, the way that I've always looked at promotion is, you know, when we play shows or we come out with a new album... I think the best way to promote it is to do things that don't cost anybody money that add value to that thing. So if we have a new show with Annie Flag, we play with Annie Flag, and we came out with this video that I was talking about to promote the show where the main crux of the storyline is like we have these new members, we want to make a new senior discount video to promote for our show at Annie Flag. We have to get them, you know, up to speed and in the band. We put that up on YouTube, everyone pushes it on social media. Hopefully people see it and laugh and that warms them to us or maybe even raises awareness of the show in a way that maybe just posting the event wouldn't. Um, and with that kind of stuff, I think it's really hard to argue. It's really hard to be like, hey, that's negative. You didn't pay, you know, you didn't charge me anything. It didn't cost me anything. And you guys put together another project. And how dare you entertain me for free? Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Same thing with the, with the podcast every week. We, you know, we do a podcast every week. Um, it's me and my buddy Brad, um, chuckandbradpodcast.com. And it was birthed out of the idea of wanting to have new content for the Senior Discount website. So every week we do a podcast where I plug Senior Discount shows. He plugs his improv shows. And we talk to local musicians. We talk about you know things in the media like Jurassic World, anything. Anything that's current or things that happen in our lives. Um, and we use that as promotion so that you know maybe you... Maybe you know the episode is called Chuck and Brad Get Arrested. And when you tune in to be like, how did these guys get arrested? You know, the first thing you hear is Senior Discount is going to play with any flag in two weeks of this thing. And yeah, when it's, when it's free and when it just adds value or kind of stretching your event or your release to another thing, I can't really see any negativity with that. And the, you know? the most important part of that is that it's fun. That's, 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 that's part of it too is that the stuff that we do, I think – adds an element of personality that you might not get. Like if you hear about a new band and they're the best band in Rhode Island, they're so tight, they're great musicians, and their name is Krusty and the Wrestlers. <laughs> and they're like, hey, come to our show. It's Krusty and the Wrestlers. We're playing at the Met on this day. We play this type of music. Like it's, that's not really intriguing. It's not really interesting. And to say, you know what? We're playing at, the, at this show, and we also did this... 10 minute comedy video this sketch video we did this podcast it's an interview about our experience playing this show or this festival or this stuff when you bring that element of personality into it i think it's a lot easier to get behind any type of artist and i think it's fun okay well you're, you're bringing up a couple of bands that you play with um are there bands that you play with regularly like more so than others like if you go to sure you know Whatever band A always plans with B and C, mm -hmm. you know, do you guys have a, a regular group that you are really tight with and, and shows just get that much better because you're with them? You know, I think I think that that used to be the case a little bit more often. We used to play with the band Bad Larry, which was a ska band. It was great because we we were a little bit more influenced by ska with our first or our earlier stuff. And they were influenced by punk. So we had this punk ska band, and the ska punk band. We would just kill these shows at the living room and have these very, very fun shows. We actually ended up covering one of their songs in our style and still play it sometimes. Um, them... Lem Lem Tennis Shoes was one of the bands we did that with. We played with Someday Providence. Arcadia Landing was another band we had those kind of shows with. But eventually, like most of those bands died out. So now it's bands that are part of the punk scene, like the Down and Outs. 
um, Sound Off we play with, who is also on our big show that we're here to promote, that I'm here to promote. Um, the uh, Shorthanded Goal we play with occasionally, Sweet Babylon we play with. A lot, a lot of the punk and ska bands seem to stick together and play shows around Firehouse 13 and stuff like that. So we've played with all those bands like many times. Um, I'd say that Sound Off is probably the band that we play with, uh, probably because the lead. Singer